City, Florida. You're on with Matt and Don. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, not Good. too bad. What's up? So, um, so uh, first, I want to shout out to my friend Wes. He told me to call into the show. I don't know if he's listening right now, hey, Wes. but uh, okay. Hey, Wes. <laughs> yeah, he's he's uh yeah he's promoting your stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, I had like just watching your show. I had like a thousand things I wanted to bring up, but uh, the main thing I wanted to bring up was uh, you were just discussing the Bible. Yeah. And I want to know how much of the Bible do you think could possibly be true? Like how much do you think could align with the secular records of history? You're talking about a historical um, aspect or the philosophical or the like well, moral? Could or? Jesus have existed? Could Jesus have existed? Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, are these people who could have existed? Oh, well, I, so on the, on the question of Jesus's historicity, I, I don't have any problem with the notion that there may have been a person at the center of that. I'm not a mythicist. When it comes to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, um, well, I don't have any, the notion that somebody may have existed like that is not a problem. What we do know, though, is that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't write the Gospels that their names are attributed to. Those are anonymous texts, and those are traditional authorship. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John become irrelevant. Whoever the author of those books were um, was, was relaying a story, uh, and there are elements of, of any of those stories that are clearly true. I mean, you, you know, you talk about real places and everything else. Um, there are elements of the story that I have no problem with the idea that they could possibly be true, even if there's no way to demonstrate it. And there are other things that uh, I see no good reason to think they could ever be true, like miracles. Well, for example, uh, Paul is, um, now granted, this is uh, not something I could point you to a book on right now. Uh, just side note in my mind, um, before I get to the next thing I wanted to discuss, Paul is mentioned in secular text so is jesus um and i would, I would jesus ask is my homework and then call back in yeah you, sh you probably should uh, because jesus isn't mentioned in any contemporary secular texts nothing written during the time that he written from 2000 years ago contemporary i'm sorry well, is anything written 2,000 years ago considered contemporary? Yes, contemporary with him. If he was alive from th from 0 to 33, uh, then that would be the period where contemporary authors would be writing, not two, three, four hundred years later. So, like, right. if I wrote not, a book, today, if I wrote a book, about, sure. if I if I wrote a book about, if I wrote a book, about, if I, holy yet. fuck, if I wrote a book about Elvis, that's not contemporary because Elvis is dead. But did you overlap with True. Elvis? Did you know, did you, were you able to see Elvis? Now, that's, that's some of the questions. My account of Elvis is probably going to be more accurate and more reasonable because I have access to sources who knew Elvis than somebody 100 years from now will be. But neither of them are actually contemporary. And the further we are removed from the events, the less credence we put. And um, Jesus, no, no specific event from Jesus' life is recorded by any contemporary and even Paul's writings are, aren't contemporary, and the Gospels aren't contemporary. They were written afterwards. That doesn't mean that there weren't people there who knew these stories or were familiar with these stories, but we're not talking about eyewitnesses' accounts, and we're not talking about things that can be verified. True. All right. Um, and I, I don't have an I'm gonna issue I'm going to be honest, I'll have to do a little bit of homework. Like, the, the uh, next thing I wanted to... Now, this, this was... This was um, more of a, a fun thing I had in mind. Are you familiar with the concept of steel manning? Yes. Could that, you steel man theism for me and then deconstruct it from there? Maybe, maybe you should tell the audience what that steel is. Steel manning is taking the opponent's position and constructing the best actual case for it rather than straw manning, oh. which is to construct something oh. flimsy you can knock down. <laughs> um, you want us to, to, to turn our intellect towards Satan. <laughs> Yeah, I, having done this many times and having been on the opposite side for, you know, more than 20 some odd years, uh, the problem is, is that I don't know of any way to, well, if I were to steel man theism. Um, yeah, not necessarily Christianity, but the belief that there is a God. I can't do it without, without recognizing the fallacies in the actual argument, because I, I have yet to be presented. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, like present the steel man version of the argument for theism and then knock it down. Well, like that, what is the most... That's what I've done for 15... That's what it... Yeah. Sure. 
at, at the end of the day, the best arguments for a, a God tend to boil down to, th to essentially arguments from ignorance, that we have no other explanation, therefore God is the best explanation. Those are the ones that are the most convincing and compelling people, um, along with their personal experience of, hey, I was in church and we were all singing and I felt euphoric and therefore that's the Holy Spirit. There's no actual connection, no way to demonstrate a connection, it is just this is what I became convinced of. Now, the problem is for theism uh, and for most stripes of theism and, and for even the arguments that I just presented, there's no way to show that, that the position is false. They, these, these are essentially unfalsifiable positions. And I, I don't know that there's any real way to steel man them. All right. I, or at least the attempt to steel man them still results in obviously flawed arguments. Do you think it's only possible to straw man it? No, I'm not. Av I'm, I'm like even even if you're trying to crack metal, we, we want to have an honest discussion and. and get I'm not the truth. straw manning. People are saying they believe in a god and they have reasons, and I'm addressing those reasons and showing where there are flaws. That's not straw manning. Straw manning would be if I said Christians are stupid and think there's a bearded man up in the sky who's going to help them win football games. That would be a straw man because that is not foundational to almost any view of Christianity or God, and it would be character. something. Yeah, it would be a character that I put up there specifically to get rid of, and that's not what I'm doing. I'm addressing what people say they believe and why they say they believe it, and pointing out wh wh where I do agree and where I don't. All right. All right, well, that's all I got for you right now. I don't want to take up any more time on the show, but well, uh, thanks like, for the discussion. I'd like for you to call back and, and hit us with some absolutely. of the other stuff. Sure. Right, absolutely. Okay. okay. Right, take it easy. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. I'm confused. Yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, Hey, your friend had you call in, and I know what his friend was expecting. Um, <laughs> but if you if you aren't calling in to to tell us what you believe and why, um, yeah, these meta conversations are not so interesting. And well, it could have been it could have been just a genuine. Let me let me see who these guys on the show are and what because you know we could have been the kind of jackasses that were, oh, there's a bearded man in the sky who's going to help you win football games type thing. Or it could, you know, we could kind of know what we're talking about. But people call in about all different... It's not just Christians calling in, although it's predominantly Christians. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's weird for me because I'm sitting here as somebody who was a believer for years and uh, as somebody who cares about the truth. And so what I want is here's a good reason to believe something. Yeah, yeah. And so when you ask me to steal men... Uh, a position. Uh, it, with a little bit of study, I could probably, I, well, certainly I could play the role of the other side. I could come up, I can do, you know, the uh, Kalam cosmological argument word for word verbatim from memory. And if someone is convinced that that is the best argument for the existence of God, then I have just steel manned it. However, I've also presented the rebuttals to that as well. And at the end of the day, um, if you're calling in for me to do both sides of the argument, uh, I love me, and I talk a lot, but you don't get to saddle me with both sides of the debate. Uh, it's yeah. Well, I'll tell you, what, what threw me a little bit is one of the things that's really Im uh, impressed on me is just the complete variety of beliefs. Um, you know, there, there is no such thing as a Christian because everybody's got their own spin and their own interpretations and all that. And, and it's not like there is one thing out there to argue for. It's 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 the scattering of, of stuff, and um, I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> let's uh, let me see if I can take.